छोड़ दो Hi, you're watching Hindustan Times. I'm Aditi Prasad, and there is an echo in my voice. Can you fix it? Hi, I've been watching Hindustan Times. I'm Aditi Prasad. Uh, today, I'm joined by Rishi Raj uh, Popat. This 27-year-old boy has solved a 2,500-year-old Sanskrit puzzle, uh, which had been, uh, you know, uh, dogging scholars for decades, for for actually centuries. Uh, this was taught this was a rule he decoded a rule taught by panini who is also of course known as the father of linguistics um rishi is uh, was a phd student at the university of uh, cambridge and um, he has as i said managed to solve uh, this uh, problem that has defeated many a scholars for many a decades um tell us uh, rishi uh, you know many congratulations on your achievement why don't you tell us about your eureka moment Sure. So I started my PhD in October 2017, hoping to solve this major problem that we could go into in a bit, but the one that you've just mentioned and briefly described. And I spent almost nine months at Cambridge, the first nine months of my PhD, uh, desperately looking for the answer. I was doing the same monotonous thing every day, going in, trying to look for the solution, not finding anything, and then going back home. After nine months, I was really fed up. I was frustrated. I was disappointed, disappointed in myself, most importantly. And so I decided that uh, perhaps it was time for me to take a bit of a break. You know, so I took a month out. Um, I decided to do absolutely anything but my 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 research work. So I swam. I cooked. I used to pray, meditate, uh, meet friends, hang out around Cambridge. so on and so forth but i did not do any research what what i was hoping to do is take that one month off to refuel and then go back a lot more energetic and also to be able to hopefully after this hiatus uh, look at look at this problem from a new perspective and hopefully bring some new or fresh insights to the table at the end of that one month i was i was still not very keen on sorry no no carry on sorry so at the end of that one month i was still not very keen on going back but begrudgingly i did go back because you have to go back if you want to finish your phd and so that's exactly what i did now i stepped in to the graduate room i still remember that day very vividly i stepped into the graduate room half heartedly i opened the first book uh the book on the top of the stack the the stack of books i had stacked up on my table i opened that notebook it i had handwritten all the derivations all the technical stuff in that and i started flipping the pages to see what i had been doing and and if i could start somewhere and as i just flipped the pages i i almost within minutes the there was a very distinct pattern that became really clear to me it was so explicit it was so clear that uh, within those minutes i knew that i definitely had what i needed to complete my phd of course but much more importantly to solve this absolutely challenging and fascinating almost gripping problem that i had signed up to solve okay uh, so tell me what 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 is this problem that you have solved that has dogged scholars for so many decades uh, we know now how you solved it i sh- perhaps should have started with what because even i couldn't fully grasp uh from what i have understood and read and uh you know before this interview uh, to understand what exactly have you solved how is it how is it relevant to us today sure so panini wrote this grammar called the ashtadhyayi it's got 4000 rules he wrote it around 500 bc these 4000 rules are supposed to together function like a sort of a linguistic machine if you will now what does this linguistic machine do it helps us derive any word and subsequently any sentence of the sanskrit language what do i mean by that let's let's use an analogy from english so that your viewers can understand what i'm trying to say let's let's take the word define and add the affix asian to it so define plus asian and predictably the final answer that we want to derive is definition right so we're trying to convert a verb into a noun now 
we pronounce define and Asian, but we but our final outcome is not define Asian, it's definition, right? So do you notice that there are certain sound changes taking place when those when the bays and the affix come together to form this final word? Now those sound changes basically are taught by Panini in such a way that one sound change applies at one step. So one rule teaches one sound change and that rule applies at one step and then another rule and then another rule. So step by step you do things and the idea is that the machine should give you the grammatically correct output automatically. Now the question is what happens if two rules are simultaneously applicable at the same step? What do you do? How do you choose which of these two rules you apply in this in the derivation? So Panini has taught us one rule to help tackle such situations, such sticky situations where two rules are simultaneously applicable at the same step. And that one meta rule, we call it a meta rule because it, it functions at the meta level. It helps us solve the big stuff, you know. So that one meta rule uh, was understood, so was misunderstood or incorrectly understood by the very first commentator to write about Panini's grammar only 150 or 200 years after Panini wrote his grammar. And, and all the scholars that wrote after him accepted this incorrect interpretation all the way up to until very recently, shall we say. Um, until, uh, until you cracked. Indeed, indeed. So what happened because of this misunderstanding is that they were getting grammatically incorrect answers at the end of, der of the derivation by using this wrong interpretation of this meta rule to choose between the two simultaneously applicable rules. So how did they tackle this problem? They said, okay, let's write even more rules. So they added even more rules to the system to in the hope that they would be able to simplify things or at least to solve the problem at hand. But instead of simplifying things, they ended up complicating things. And instead of giving us solutions, they gave us more problems, unfortunately. Okay, I hear Hello? you. I hear you. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Sorry. No, my, my now, 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 is... now, 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 now I'm coming. Now I'm coming. I'm coming to it. I'm coming to it. Yeah. Yeah. On the other hand, what I did is I said, I don't think we need to add, add any extra rules to Parini's grammar. We should trust him. He wrote 4,000 rules, was a bloody genius. He knew what he was doing. So surely we should trust him, try to understand his system better in such a way that it works self-sufficiently. And I reinterpreted this meta rule. And I'm happy to go into my reinterpretation if you like. But that is, I'm sorry for the detour, but that is the answer to your question. All right. No, now I understand uh, you, you rewrote. What exactly did you, you probably, you understood, you grasped his meanings differently, perhaps. Uh, you know, that's what I've understood. Perhaps you can just try and explain that. In sure. Terms to our very simply, very simply, and very briefly. So the the rule one four two has a word called para, which means that which comes after the other or that which follows the other. The tradition had understood understood that as that which comes after the other in the serial order of Panini's rules. So rule twenty three defeats rule twenty one. Rule twenty two defeats rule twenty one. You understand what I'm saying? The rule that comes afterwards. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, got it. Yeah. On the other hand, what, what, and that was giving us all kinds of incorrect answers. I'll tell you how I interpreted the rule. I interpreted the rule as that rule, which is applicable to the right hand side part of the word wins. So, for example, in def, define plus Asian, Asian is to the right hand side, and the rule applicable to Asian wins. So, so the idea is that you pick whatever comes after, but not in the serial order of rules, but instead going from left to right, what comes after. So the meaning of para is that which comes after, but we had to find the correct context to understand the exact meaning of the term para. And that's 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 where the, the secret to this lies. That's where the key to this puzzle lies. Interesting. Very interesting. What is, uh, you know, what, what inspired you to go after this particular problem? I'm sure there are other problems that you could have solved or tackled in your thesis. But you decided to do this. What was what was the rationale behind it? What was the thinking behind it? Inspiration behind it, rather. Well, the thing is, I started studying Parni's grammar during the first year of my undergraduate uh, studies outside of college. So during my classes, I would often come up with questions 
and and my teacher was brilliant my guru was brilliant she was able to answer a lot of them but there were certain questions that she was either not able to answer or had only insatisfactory or unsatisfactory solutions to offer so i became curious about about precisely those questions and it is those questions that got crystallized uh and by the time i reached the third, third year of my undergrad i was i was pretty sure that i actually wanted to study paninis grammar and sanskrit further and not economics which is what i was studying in college until then so that so you so i became economics to paninis grammar that's why i did studied. i did i did thank you so i i realized that that my heart lay in paninis grammar and i was becoming so captivated by the challenges that i was facing and that people were not able to solve uh, uh, or, or that people were not able to explain to me you know i decided that it's time to take matters into one's own hands and and conduct research on the subject so that we can find answers which are satisfactory and which make sense all right uh, what is the you know uh, tell us um how can this you know there i i've been reading reports which say that this breakthrough that you have achieved at such a young age um can revolutionize the study of sanskrit how exactly do you think it's going to do that i think one significant way in which it will do that is helping us improve the manner in which we interact with computers and what exactly do do i mean by that i have to be very specific here to avoid any misunderstanding I mean this is the first time look now that we have this very simple elegant and teachable algorithm that i have found by by correctly interpreting parani's rule we've got the algorithm now using this algorithm we can teach all of his rules and essentially his entire grammar to the computer now that will help the computer uh use the speaker's intention and parani's rules club them together to produce human speech of course in the sanskrit language so this is the first time that the computer will be able to use a grammar made of very conventional uh, rule structures so a rule based grammar to produce human speech and so if we are able to achieve that indeed successfully that would be uh, shall we say a milestone in the not only in the intellectual history of india but also mm -hmm. in the history of human interaction with machines in general all right in any case as i understand it sanskrit is considered one of the most suitable languages for computer softwares and you think this is going to accelerate that further i think more than being the most suitable language because parini has uh, described the structure of sanskrit in such an elegant way that that certainly does help us uh in in a variety of applications all right um tell us um, uh, you know it's it's clearly a great achievement um it's going to revolutionize a lot of things including the study of sanskrit and its application in the in, in perhaps the computer uh, industry the software industry um why do you think this language machine of paninis remained decoded for so long or undecoded for so long sorry i think because as i said the first the first scholar to comment on this grammar misinterpreted it everyone just went on accepting that misinterpretation and one of the problems when you when you have this so so when you have too many commentaries to study you know when you have the basic text and then a commentary on it and then a commentary on that and then a sub commentary and a sub sub commentary and so on and so forth you become really busy with the process of learning now learning is important but uh, and I'm, i might get a bit philosophical so stop me if you don't like it but i think a lot what's what's really a lot more important than learning is the ability and willingness to unlearn what you've learned so if you keep piling things on you know if you keep cramming things into your head then you got no space to think and uh, you've just learned a lot and now you don't you don't really have a mechanism to identify those parts of your knowledge infrastructure which are not robust or which are not accurate on the other hand if you are willing to unlearn what that does essentially 
is that helps you break everything down, identify the weak parts, identify the, the problematic areas and fix that. And so if you're able to unlearn and relearn, that's what that is. It, it is precisely in that in that repetitive process of unlearning and relearning that, that the potential for discovery lies, you know. And so I think that the tradition, by the way, I must tell you, the tradition is brilliant and it has taught us so much so accurately about Parnini's grammar and I give full credit to it. I am in, I am deeply in awe of it and I respect it very much. That said, there were certain mistakes that were made, perhaps because of this preoccupation with learning and learning and learning, and those had to be corrected. And I think that we should not, uh, we should not hesitate to correct certain things that were said in the past, even though we respect the scholars of the past, because India has always had a, a history of debate and disagreement where you use logic to to uh, to establish what the truth is and so that's precisely what i tried to do all right uh, so you moved from economics to sanskrit uh, and decoding panini's language machine um, is clearly no regrets at leaving economics am i right and i i i, I hope not <laughs> Oh, no, okay. no, I'm kidding. What, no, kind of absolutely response? not. What's the kind of all right? What kind of response have you been receiving, Rishi, after this this very interesting and remarkable feat that, uh, of course, uh, you see you achieved? So my, I mean, I've I've been thronged with messages and and calls and. And you know uh, uh, what not? I mean, frankly, I barely had. Sorry. Appearances and in interviews. Indeed, indeed. It the, and 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 it goes on and on. Uh, there are people who are contacting my mom to ask if I'm married or not, and so on and so forth. So it's really gone quite far, I would say. Yeah. Very, very interesting. So <laughs> you've had your eureka moment, and let me just end this conversation by asking you. If you have a message for the youth of today of hmm. how to go about achieving their Eureka moment. So I think we have to draw inspiration from none other than Parani. He wrote 4,000 rules. Surely that was no easy thing to do, but he did it and he produced a machine. Remember, he did all of this in 500 BC. When he... When he had access to very little, if anything, uh, a very small fraction of the uh, of access, uh, as opposed to the kinds of things that we have access to today. You know, we are very fortunate in that sense. A lot has happened in the last twenty five hundred years. Now, if he could achieve something so spectacular, uh, twenty five hundred years ago, and remember, he is from the land that we are from. He's our intellectual or civilizational ancestor, we could say. If he could achieve this 2,500 years ago, what is stopping us with all the tools at our disposal from doing amazing things? So I, and I, I, I do speak from experience when I say that really there is no limit. I did not expect to be able to crack this puzzle uh, in the way it happened, even though I was pretty confident and, and I was determined that I was going to do it, but I didn't know it was going to happen like this. So some, so, so as long as you, put your mind to it and you really pour your, all your energy into it, miracles can happen and you just have to really work hard and have faith in yourself and have faith in Bhagwan. That's what I would say. Have faith in yourself and have faith in Bhagwan, and you will get your Eureka moment. And that's the message coming in from Rishi Raj Popat, a Cambridge University a PhD who in his thesis has completely revolutionized the study of learning or study of Sanskrit as we will go forward. Thank you, Rishi, for joining us for this broadcast. We're very inspired to hear from you. And I hope I, our viewers, especially our young viewers, also take inspiration from your words. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Aditi. Thank you.